Welcome to In a Tiny Garden and to the first of the weekly propagating series. In this video, I'll mainly be showing you seed sowing because it won't be until next week that we'll have little seedlings to prick out and pot on. In this video, I'll be starting off the following seeds. Chilies, aubergines, and then some flowers, cosmos, marigold, and sweet peas. And then the first of the successional sowing vegetables will be lettuce, peas for shoots, just one early beetroot, and what was the last one? Spinach. And then I'm hoping we'll have guest appearances from ginger and sweet potato, which I haven't ever grown before. So it's a bit of an experiment for me, but I'll bring you along for the ride. So let's get started. I'm using multi-purpose compost this year, but I've used coir and a special seed sowing compost in the past, but I'm trying to save money this year. So sifted multi-purpose will be absolutely fine. I'm mixing it with vermiculite, which increases water retention around the seedlings and also ensures an open free draining texture, which reduces the risk of getting fungal diseases like dampening off, which is quite common in young seedlings that are sort of overwatered. So here I'm overfilling the seed trays, uh, recycled plastic seed trays with the mix, which has been sifted out. So the big particles have already been removed. Um, and then I'm just leveling it off and then I'll tamp it down slightly just to give a uh, better contact for the little fine roots of the seedlings. And then they'll have kind of better contact with the soil as well. And then on the top layer, I sift out more um, of the multi-purpose. Again, this ensures that there's not sort of big particles that would impede the fine seeds from germinating. You wouldn't need to do this if you had a special seed compost or kind of coir mixed with vermiculite. And then I give them a good watering before I start seed sowing. I've used recycled black plastic plant labels for the past two years with a white marker um, that's paint, white paint marker that's uh, super easy to wipe off for every season. I found these so much better than popsicle sticks, which tend to fade or rot down before I've even harvested the vegetables. So I'm going to start with chilies, which need quite a long hot season. So it's best to start them in late January or February if you have got a heated propagator or early March if you don't. I can't handle much spice, so I don't grow many chilies, but these little trifetti peppers from Heritage Seed Library are very pretty. So I grew them indoors last year. You can keep the same plants overwintered inside for the following year as well, but I didn't do that last year. And then next, I'm going to sow next door to it um, aubergine. And this is actually my first time growing aubergines and they need a long hot season uh, and I don't have a greenhouse so I'm sort of experimenting with growing them in a pot in the tiny garden. It should be fine and it will be easier if I bought a grafted plant that gives it a head start so if these aren't successful this year I'll, I'll try it next year. But yeah, just two varieties of chilies because I, I don't uh, eat very many and then I'm just giving a go with two types of aubergine which one is a purple and white one and one's a an orange one so they should be nice if I get some fruits. I then cover the chili and aubergine seeds in a layer of that vermiculite which is lightweight as well so it will allow the seeds to come through easily. And then I cover them in this handy lid so you can use any container though with drainage holes and put a kind of polythene bag over the top over the top of it just to keep in some humidity while they're starting to germinate. And then I give them a water. And then I'll put them on my preheated propagator, which will speed up germination and lessen the risk of any seeds rotting off. And I use a grow light, but a sunny windowsill has been fine for me in the past for chilies. And now I'm going to start to sow the first of the successional sowing of lettuce. And I'm a bit obsessed with lettuce, so um, I like that I don't need to buy a plastic bag full at the grocery store. So here I'm going to be cramming 11 varieties into two of these little trays. And like I said, I'll be successionally sowing them every kind of two to three weeks. 
So when one lettuce has gone to seed, I've got more plugs ready in the coal frame to plant out at the allotment or in the garden in pots. Um, but at which point I'll let you know the rough spacing out information and that sort of thing when we put them out. Now, old seed is likely not viable, but I did have some germinate from this packet last year. I think it's from 2016 or 17. Um, so they have one last chance of germination, and if none come up, then that's it for the seed packet. So this is my favorite variety, red salad bowl, and I sow it every year. It's such a good one. And I grow sort of all different colors of colors and shapes of leaves, so the salads are really interesting as well. So depending on the age of the seed, I'll sort of sow more thickly for the seed that I've had lying around for a while because the germination rate will be sort of less. And then the freshest seed, I'll just kind of cover um, sprinkle a fine layer and then I cover them in vermiculite to about twice their depth and then I water them and I'll put a cover on loosely and I don't put them on the heated propagator but as soon as I see germination pop up I'll put them outside in the cold frames as they're hardy unlike the chili and aubergine which will be inside with me for many months to come. So I'm filling a modular tray here with the same compost, but I don't need to sieve the top as these seeds going in here, which are spinach, beetroot, and peas, are much bigger than the others. So they don't need as fine a compost. So I overfill the trays, knock it down to get rid of any air pockets, and then I just sort of pick out the bigger chunks. Yeah, again, you wouldn't have this problem if you were using a seed compost or guar. These are very hard wearing recycled plastic trays. I never buy the flimsy ones at garden centers as they don't last many years. But again, you can use any container with drainage holes. All the vegetables in this tray I'll be successionally sowing in a couple weeks time as well. So, and at which point I'll, I'll include a bunch more beetroot then as well. There, I, I think the seeds are gorgeous, the little clusters of seeds. And then I just water the compost before I get sowing. So, we're gonna start with spinach and I'm sowing them about one centimeter deep in the compost and then I'll cover them over afterwards. Since having a garden I've always grown spinach. I sow it now under cover and then from early spring to the middle of June just direct outdoors but the later it is the more likely it is to bolt aka run to seed and then the leaves go bitter. So um, you can sort of sow up until June and then you wait over the kind of heat of summer and then you can sow again in the autumn for picking over winter. Um, and you can use fleece uh, protection out of the allotment as well to kind of extend the season. And then here I'm just quickly sowing uh, two beetroot varieties, uh, Boltardi, which is slow to bolt, and uh, Detroit, and also loads more in a couple weeks. And then I'm just sowing some peas for shoots. So I'm doing about four in each module as they aren't going growing to adult stage and um, don't need a big root run. So you could do this all year round indoors as well for fresh pea shoots. They're so delicious. I find it a lot easier to plant in these modules rather than direct sowing out at the allotment because that way I've got something to fill the gaps and they don't get eaten as much by slugs. So you've got uh, stronger plants. And then I cover the seeds with more compost, pat it down slightly to make contact with the seeds and then I water it. And I won't put these on a heat mat or anything like that, but as soon as I see them poke up, I'll put them out in the lean-to greenhouse outside. And I just make sure that the compost doesn't dry out in between. But giving it a good soak like this means it, it won't. I probably only need one one uh, soak before they germinate. And then I'm finally starting off my sweet peas. So these are probably my favorite flower uh, because of their scent. They're so gorgeous and they don't travel well, so you'll never see them in shops for sale. So that makes growing your own even more of a pleasure. 
I'm sewing them into these root trainers. These ones are actually made of sustainable rubber, um, but they're really fiddly, so I don't know if I'd recommend them. Um, it, so root trainer just means like an elongated cell to accommodate the long roots on peas. Um, but last year I used toilet rolls as well and it, alongside these and it worked completely fine. I just find it's harder to keep on top of watering when they're in a toilet roll because it kind of the outside dries out versus these stay nice and um, moist for the seedling. So I'm just tamping down the compost after filling it, picking out the big bits. And then I'm pressing it down so that again there's good contact. I'm making a little hole for the seedlings. So then I'm going to pre-water the compost quite a bit. And another reason for me to water them so much <laughs> is because I didn't pre-soak these peas. Um, so I have in the past, uh, and but I find it really fiddly because I, I grow so many varieties. So I have to have like all these glasses of water with seeds labeled in each one. So this time I'm not pre-soaking. Um, it'll just take them a little bit longer to germinate. And as a precaution, I added a couple extra seedlings in each hole. So yes, so I'm gonna do about three or four seeds to each module. Um, and again, if they're slightly older seeds, I do a few more. Um, and then when I plant them out, there'll be about two or three in each kind of module and they can um, they can stay outside like that. Uh, they can grow on like that as sort of like twins or triplets uh, up together. They kind of help each other scramble up the supports. So yes, I'm growing many varieties. And do have a read of the seed packet because some varieties of sweet peas don't germinate as well as others. And usually it'll say that on the seed packet. So it'll say, um, you know, I've sent you more, at least with Chiltern seeds, I've sent you more. And so multi, multi sow um, extras and be patient. <laughs> You can always sow in autumn and overwinter them if you've got a greenhouse or cold frame, but I always forget. <laughs> so these will catch up quickly anyways, and also avoids any etoliation, which just means when the stem grows too spindly and long in search of light and results in a weaker plant. I might also plant some directly in the ground when these are planted out at the allotment so that I've got a succession of flowers. So now I'm starting just uh, one variety of early peas for outdoors. So these are peas for peas, not peas for shoots. And it's a variety called Early Onward, which I can plant out as soon as strong enough when they're about 15 centimeters tall to avoid them being eaten by something else. I'm only planting a few in each cell as I'll thin to two, unlike the peas for shoots where I did several. I'll then plant them out in pairs like the sweet peas, but you'll see this in subsequent videos. And I'm watering well until it comes out the bottom. For the sweet peas, pre-soaking would have let me uh, pre-select viable seeds. Um, so you wait until the radical starts emerging, which is that first little white shoot. And then I'd know which ones would germinate. And I'd only sow those ones to avoid wasting compost. Um, and then I top up with more compost so that they should be at a depth of about one centimeter each. These will go in the cold frame as soon as they pop up above the compost. I'll keep them inside until then, which just speeds up the process. And then we're sowing radish. So I'm trying a few radish, which I normally only direct sow at the allotment in these leftover paper pots, uh, which I found in the cupboard, but making your own paper pots would be even better. I find they dry out really quickly when inside though. So I'm sowing to a depth of about one centimeter deep. I tend to forget to sow many radish as they aren't my favorite vegetable. Um, so I've got lots of old seeds, so as you can see, I'm overfilling a bit. So if it was fresh, I'd put about five in each. Um, and then I would ensure, so I'm, I'm ensuring I've got enough uh, to germinate of each. Uh, brassica seeds do last several years though, but some of these seeds are very old. Using a label helps to open the packet. And then fill it with more compost and then I'll water them really well. And then these can pretty much go directly outside in the cold frame where they'll germinate. In this container, I'm going to sow marigolds and two types of cosmos and then a little of my leftover wild strawberry seeds on the side. And so first I'm sifting the top layer of compost before I sow. They don't need to be covered much and then this way there won't be any big, big bits in the way and the top layer will be nice and fine for when the roots kind of first hit it. 
and then I tamp it down a tiny bit before sewing and I'll do it after sewing as well to make sure it has good comp contact with the compost. First up are French marigolds, aka Taget's Petula in Latin. They've got open flowers so are easy for the bees and butterflies to germinate. So I'm growing these as companion planting for tomatoes as they give off a smell that whitefly hate, which despite not having a greenhouse, I still seem to get a lot of outside even at the allotment. And then next I'm going to sow some cosmos seeds and which although beautiful are I'm growing them again to attract hoverflies which are great pollinators and their larvae can hoover up aphids in the veg patch. I grew antiquity last year as well and the it's got a lovely pink that sort of fades as they grow. Um, they're so amazing. They just keep blooming the more you sort of deadhead or pick them. And apricot laminate is a fun variety as well um, that was quite hard to get hold of this year. So these will eventually go out to the allotment after the last frost date. So I'm sowing these ones a bit more thinly because uh, the seed's really fresh. I just got it a few months ago. And then next I'm going to be sowing the wild strawberry seeds, which are Fragaria vesca in Latin. If I ever finish sowing the cosmos. Their seeds, uh, the seeds are so very tiny, so you have to be quite careful and there's not many left in this packet. Um, so wild ones grow from seed. They aren't the same as the big strawberries you, which you need to buy either as bare root or as plants. Um, but I adore eating these these wild ones. I have a few tiny plants in the I have a few plants in the tiny garden already, but uh, they're perennial, and uh, I want more. I have a video of planting the standard bare root strawberries in containers in the tiny garden on Instagram. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description. I'm trying these snapdragons from seed for the first time. It'll be hard to keep that paper pot evenly watered, but these tiny minuscule seeds will germinate. I hope to put them in a cut flower bed alongside the roses at the allotment. So that'll look quite nice. The seeds are so very fine. And after that, I'll cover them very carefully in vermiculite. So I'm covering all the flower seeds in vermiculite now, and then I will put a lid on these until they germinate near a sunny windowsill. And then I'll be able to plant out after the last frost. And giving them a nice little water, being careful not to disperse this tiny snapdragon seeds in the meantime. The rose on my watering can is not working very well, so I need to get a replacement. I've tried cleaning it, um, but it's still not, not working. So I'm planting ranunculus corms today. I planted the rest of these that you see in early January, but that's not the ideal time. The ideal time is either in autumn or in spring. So the reason I'm doing it today is because this one variety is the only variety that actually didn't come up. So I'm going to replant them. And this is what the corm looks like when it arrives. So it's all dried out. And what you want to do is soak them for three to six hours. And this is what they look like. So they've plumped up and this is what we're going to plant. Corm side down, so leggy bits if you will, uh, down. And this crown is where the shoots will come up. So you want to plant it this way down into the soil. Make the hole a bit bigger. And cover it over. Put a bit of extra compost on top after. And then I'll do the same with this one that didn't come up in the other tray. And I'll put these outside now in the lean-to greenhouse where these guys have been growing and see if these ones uh, decide to catch up. And then in a few weeks I'll be planting another whole set of corms uh, for a spring planting. So these potatoes, which are seed potatoes, um, so I bought them specially online. They come in big bags and as soon as they arrive I take them out of the bags and I set them up on a sunny windowsill in a frost-free place. So they're chitting, C-H-I-T-T-I-N-G, and they are first earlies and earlies, and I even have some main crop, which don't really benefit from chitting, but 
I, you need to take them out of the bag anyway, and they all arrive at the same time. So uh, this is a Charlotte potato, which I'd recommend for beginning if, if you're just starting out with potatoes. I've got some other interesting varieties here, some that I grew last year and some that are new, but I always grow Charlotte potatoes because they're quite reliable and very tasty and first earlies, so they're really useful. And if you haven't bought your uh, seed potatoes yet, you still can, and you don't need to chit them. This just gets them off to a, a bit of a quicker start. So that's where the shoots will grow from. Um, and you put them in egg cartons with the blunt end up or the one with the most eyes. You're looking for stubby, not spindly um, shoots on, on the main crops. So these actually Apache potatoes arrived a bit early. And so these are getting a bit long and I don't have a garage or anything like that to be putting them in, so um, they've just been inside in the warmth. So those are rearing to go. I also thought I'd just mention, because you're gonna see it in shot sometimes on the kind of propagating section in front of our windowsill here, are sweet potatoes. I've not successfully grown uh, sweet potatoes before, but I absolutely adore them, so I'm not giving up. Last year I went away on a work trip and so I didn't replace the water and I think that's what did it because next thing I knew I looked over and the whole thing was moldy. So this year I'm gonna be on top of it and basically you submerge the sweet potato halfway down in um, a glass of water and I've just poked these um, earbuds in, don't worry I haven't used them, just to suspend it in the water so the roots can grow and then slips will uh, start appearing, little shoots from the section that's not underwater. And then as soon as they get, you know, kind of that high, I'll be clipping them off and putting them into some soil in order to grow outside later. Now, again, I'm in a warm area of London. In the UK, it's quite sheltered. And so these should be able to work out at the allotment. But if you're in cooler parts of the UK, I'm not sure how successful they'd be. The other thing I'm doing for the very first time this year, very, very first time, I've never even attempted this, is um, ginger uh, from the root and turmeric. So I'm not gonna show you how to grow these because again, I've not done it myself, so I might not be successful. But basically, I broke up the ginger, made sure there were little bits of eyes, uh, shoots that I could see, and then just buried the ginger in. And there's a turmeric under there too. They take a long time, so I'm gonna be putting them on the heated propagator. I really hope you enjoyed this week's propagating session. And if you did, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes.